Oh, he's actually got quite a fork. The pectoral fins. Oh, yeah. A huge yeah, difference yeah. there. Pierce and a little hole into the cup. So that the egg is actually on top. Hello, my name's Sean and welcome to a brief introduction to the Scottish Fisheries Coordination Centre Electrofishing Database. Basically, what I'm going to provide is a brief introduction to the concept of the database, its uses and its benefits, and then go into a more detailed look at the data entry process and also the reporting process. Basically, the database was set up to store fisheries data in Scotland in a standard format and it now holds over 15,000 individual electrofishing events from over 1,000 sites across Scotland. Uh, it covers most catchments in Scotland and it's now recently been developed in North England for the Tyne and the Weir Rivers Trust. So it follows a quite a simple procedure of data entry, secure storage and then exporting functionality so you can export your data and you can also share the data with other members or you can share it with people like SEPA and SNH. And also there is uh, online support and ongoing support for myself so if you have any problems get in touch or we can set up an online screen share to uh, resolve the problem. Right so here we are inside the electrofishing database. What I'm going to do is basically outline the procedure of tasks you should go through to input electrofishing sites and events and then I'm going to look at the reporting process so I'll firstly look at publishing your electrofishing sites and events and then we'll look at how you might export this data in the form of an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF for example. The first thing is up here on the left you'll see maintain river order. This is relevant mostly for a new catchment, a new river using the database where you have to assign your different tributaries, river orders. Basically if we go in here you'll see that this is an example from the Tay and this is all the first order rivers and this is basically used to assign your electrofishing sites to these rivers. So if I wanted to add in a new river order for example to the Tay, I'll click on the Tay, if I want to add a river to the Tummel there's a tumble at Gary. As you can see, you have first order, second order, third order, fourth order. If I want to add another river order to the river Gary, for example, I can click Add New. You'll see river code here. It's, it's good practice to use the SEPA river code. And that is 4678 for the tilt. There's the tilt in there. Don't worry about the outflow easting and northing for now. And you'll see up in the top here you have this bar. This is quite similar for quite a few of the different areas. So this is submit. This is reset all fields. This is cancel. This is submit and add a new record, which is quite a useful one if you want to do multiple records. Let's just refresh. So if I want to add that, click add. There we go, there's the tilt has been inputted as a fourth order river tributary of the Gary. Okay, so I'll come out of that back to the home. <clears throat> so the first thing at the top there is view my organisation. That just shows basic details, contact details for the assistant biologist, the head biologist and uh, an address for your fisheries trust. Secondly here, very importantly, you have view and edit my sites. This is the first step you need to do to input all of your electrofishing sites into the system. What you then do is you will add electrofishing events to these specific sites. So if you have a site that you monitor every year, you don't need to create a new site every year. You just assign the electrofishing event to this pre-set site. So we click on here. 
This is the Tay. You'll see all the different sites that are in there at present. If I click on a site here, you see it has quite basic information such as a site code, it's got grid reference and other details about the districts, it's also got your river orders and you can view the site on a site map. It's very important when you put in your six figure grid references here to check that they're correct. It's very important to click view site on street map to check that you have the correct grid references. So here you see the arrows pointing right at the side of the river near Tumble Bridge, which is where the site was, so that's that's correct. So we can move on. That's fine. What you also see here is below you'll have events. So if there's any electrofishing events being carried out on that site, they will come in here. So there's obviously been one done here for this site. Photos. If you wish to store your downstream and upstream photographs, you can do so here. Just clicking Add New. Any other documents about the site that you might want, might wish to study? So, uh, add, sorry. Then audits. Quite important from my point of view. If I want to help out with any queries, then I can look in audit and see what's happened. So, you see, the previous staff member in the Tay has added this site in 2011, and he's updated it several times. So that's that. So if I go back to view and edit my sites. If I want to add a new site, click Add New here. And we won't go into this too much. If you want to add a site, you can add it in there. You can add a date. Salmon Fishery District. Tay. And then it automatically loads up your river orders in this side. River Tay, Tummel, Gary, Tilt that we've just added in there. So then you can create a new site here. And once it's ready, click OK Submit. And obviously it's flagging up the fact that you need to have values in here. So I need to have six figure grid references in for this to go through. OK. Just cancel that. It's very important. First step is to get all your sites assigned and then it will save you a lot of time in the long run. So once you've completed the first step of adding in your electrofishing sites, the second key step in the process is to add in your electrofishing events. So I'll go into detail on this in the second video tutorial.